Father President, I present for the degree of Doctor of Catechetics and Evangelization, Honoris Causa, her whom the university has approved, Sherry Waddell. Conversion is a work of grace. Likewise, evangelization cannot bear fruit without the help of the Holy Spirit. But while the movements of grace and the Holy Spirit are a mystery, the process by which a person moved towards that mystery are less mysterious to the church today, thanks to the work of Sherry Waddell. Over two decades ago, in partnership with the Western Dominican Province, she helped found the Catherine of Siena Institute. Since then, through the work of the Institute and the called and gifted seminars she developed, she has helped Catholics around the world understand how the Holy Spirit has uniquely equipped them to serve the body of Christ. More recently, since the publication of her book, Forming Intentional Disciples, Sherry Waddell has helped the church as a whole, under, as a whole understand how it can move more effectively and call Catholics to follow Christ in a committed and fruitful relationship. All told, her work has reached more than 170,000 Catholics in 195 dioceses and archdioceses and five continents. It has helped shape the direction of the new evangelization first called by Pope John Paul II and is bearing fruit all around us. For her dynamic, faithful, and transforming work in the mission in the field of the new evangelization, Franciscan University of Steubenville is proud to declare Sherry Waddell, Doctor of Catechetics and Evangelization, Honoris Casa. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. What an incredible honor, Father Dave and all the university and all of you graduates and a great, even greater honor to be here on your special day. You know, when I first heard, when I first ran into Franciscan grads who were starting to work in parishes and dioceses, I went, Yahoo! All right. We're getting some apostles out there. It was incredibly exciting. So I am just really amazingly honored by this. Um, I was intensely, myself as a, as a teen, as a young adult, intensely, passionately fig trying to figure out what God wanted me to do with my life. And it mattered so much and for quite a while, I really didn't know what I should be doing. And it's interesting, here you are, you've worked so hard, you've achieved this wonderful thing, you've got your degrees, you're getting your degrees actually in a few minutes, and you think, okay, what next? One of the things I was so passionate about this when I did my master's degree, my thesis was on the discernment of personal work and vocation. And I picked five men, five women, all outstanding Christians, both Catholic and Protestant, who had, had led lives, extraordinary lives of fruitfulness and impact on many, many other people. And I wanted to know, how did they figure it out? How do you figure it out? How does God communicate this to you? And one of the things that totally blew me away that I did not expect was when I realized that the average age at which these extraordinary men and women had really been able to name, to clarify, to, an to intentionally answer that call, the average age at which that occurred was 36, not 21, not 25. So if you're still wondering, no, it wasn't a, it wasn't a waste. 
your degree, all that work, all that effort is part of your preparation. But young adulthood for most of us is becoming the person capable of answering the call when it comes. And for most of us, you know, we'll be doing, you'll be doing all kinds of fascinating things from here on out. Some of you will go on and get other degrees. Some of you will be pursuing professions of various kinds. But all of that can still be preparation for the vocation to which God is calling you, that work of love that is going to change you and change the world around you. And part of that, what I would suggest, honestly, if you haven't done it already, I would really suggest that you discern your charisms as part of that preparation. These are the supernatural gifts that all the baptized have been given for the sake of others. They are different than sanctifying graces. They are what St. Thomas, Thomas calls the gratuitous graces, the ways that you and I are supernaturally empowered by God to be instruments of his love and his mercy, his beauty, his wisdom, his healing, and his provision for others. They empower us to become really fruitful apostles, disciples and apostles. And they are major clues as to your vocation, and they are major supernatural tools that you have been given to carry out your mission. And you, this is a wonderful time to begin that process of discerning because it takes time, it takes real discernment, it takes life experience. Charisms tend to manifest at two points in our life, and one of which is when you run into the person or the situation that needs the gift. Now, those of you, when I deal with people who are as young as you are, I can almost absolutely guarantee you, you have charisms you don't know about yet. Not because you're, you're not faithful, not because you're not praying, but because you just haven't had enough life experience. You may not have met the person or the situation or the community for whom that gift was given and which will be sort of call it forth from you. The other time our charisms begin to manifest is after the point when we go through some kind of spiritual awakening, become disciples, our faith becomes personal. And when we start to ask God, what do you want of me? Within a year or so after that point, that's when we start hearing these incredible stories of amazing gifts starting to manifest in the lives of people. Your charisms are not only one of the great remedies for burnout, and you may think, oh, I'm never going to burn out. Yeah, I'm telling you, a lot of us struggle with that. But using them is an unending, continuous source of joy, of, spirit, of prayer in your life. It's like prayer. It's like contemplation of satisfaction, of energy, and especially of fruitfulness. And so that's really, again, there are many ways to prepare, and this degree that you're receiving is one of those most crucial ways, but discerning the charisms is another. One thing I did want to mention, I don't know about you, but I didn't have pandemic on my 2020 calendar anywhere, strangely enough. And I, this is my first trip after being five months in quarantine. I came home from Germany, and boom, I was in. And I need, I need to say this, not just because of the situation we're in right now, but for your future. When I was an undergrad, my conversion, I went through a major conversion as an undergrad and was looking for places to pray during the day. Now, I don't come from a Catholic background. I was raised as a fighting fundamentalist in southern Mississippi. So that's serious fundamentalism, not your northern fundamentalism, which is not serious, of course, but southern fundamentalism. Okay. I was looking for a place to pray during the day. Protestant churches were closed. Catholic churches were open. There was one, a big Gothic church, a few blocks from campus. I wandered in one day, and I felt a presence of God there that I had not experienced anywhere else. And that is why you and I are talking today. Now, my first experience, my first job out of college was a disaster, and I won't go into the details, but basically 
My boss hired me to take his place and didn't tell me or anyone else. Meanwhile, I was a secretary who could barely type 35 words a minute. But when he informed me that he was leaving in two weeks and I was taking over, okay, you can see my problem. I left before they fired me. And then I was unemployed. And then I came within 25 cents of going homeless, literally. In the midst of this, my place of refuge was that mysterious church, that Catholic church, where for some reason there was a presence of God that I had not encountered somewhere else. And one day I visited, and you know, they, they, hide the, they put those things in the vestibule for people like me. They lay traps for you, okay? And I picked something up, and it was a passage that I know all of you have heard before by John Henry Newman. But it was a complete revelation to me. I didn't even, I had no idea who he was. But it said, and this is the brief version, God has determined that I should reach that which will be my greatest happiness. He looks on me individually. He calls me by my name. He knows what I can do, what I can best be, what is my greatest happiness. And he means to give it to me. And then he said, whatever, wherever I am, I can never be thrown away. I cannot tell you what that meant to me at that point. Because I did feel exactly that. I felt thrown away, shamed and a failure. And I was only out of college one year. That was that same was the light in my darkness. I couldn't even afford to pay for it. I had to leave it behind because I was too broke. And I didn't know who Newman was, and I kept forgetting his name. So I spent a couple years after that trying to relocate it again because I had no clues. But I tell you that because this is what I, at the end of every single called and gifted that I have taught in the last 20 plus years, I always, this is how I end, and it's because of that experience. No matter what, in Jesus Christ, you and I cannot be thrown away. Not a pandemic can do it. Not an economic recession. Not scandal in the church. Not any number of things that occur in our lives, not just right now, but in the future. Nothing can ultimately thwart God's purpose in your life if you stay with him. The only purpose, the only person who can thwart God's purpose for you is you yourself and only if you leave him and don't come back. When we screw up, and you will, we say, Lord, I am sorry. We repent, and we get back up, and we go back to holding his hand. If you stay with him, he will make a real way. Now, the thing is, of course, it may not be the dream you and I had originally, which usually involved, you know, becoming, a, oh, let's say, a billionaire tech entrepreneur by the time you're 30, or maybe a, a star, a rock star, you know, a, a movie star or something. Or maybe it was just a perfect incandescent love and a great family. Or whatever your dream is. Life is tough. And not all of our first romantic dreams come true, but I can absolutely promise you this. If you stay with Jesus Christ, he will make a way for you that so that you have an extraordinary life, a fruitful life, a life filled with his presence, filled with his love, and a life that changes the lives of many, many other people. Someone out there is waiting right now for what you have been given to give, and their life hangs in the balance. And I mean this literally. 
You may not know who they are yet. They may not even have been born yet. But in God's providence, you are the one, the anointed one, the one called to this mission, this person, this relationship, this community, this profession, this neighborhood, this family. And it matters that you say yes. Because your yes is going to unleash the beauty and the truth and the grace of God, which is going to go out into history and change the lives of many other people. Even when you don't know it's happening. And honestly, a lot of our fruit is not seen by us in this life. But it's happening all the same. So I want you to hear this, but spoken to you personally. God has determined, unless you interfere with his plan, that you should reach that which will be your greatest happiness. He looks on you individually. He calls you by your name. He knows what you can do, what you can best be, what is your greatest happiness and he means to give it to you. Whatever, wherever you are, today, next year, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you can never be thrown away. We can trust this. God bless you all. Thank you so much. <laughs>